Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our uh, another session that we're hosting this month. Um, this is an opportunity to learn about the incredible, um, amazing, and wonderful Tim McGregor, also known as Nakwagijik. And um, he's going to be here with us to spend some time this morning Good to morning, talk everyone. about. Thank you. To talk about Jingtamak and what that means. Um, and uh, just before I turn it over to Tim to introduce himself, I want to just remind folks that are tuning in that in the description box below on the YouTube uh, link that you're watching on, there is there are two links. One is a link to ask questions. So we're going to leave some time to um, ask Tim questions. And so as you're watching and you're wondering something, uh, have your if you're in a classroom, you can have your teacher enter that in the question that you have, um, and you can use that form to do so. And lastly, we just finished um, a wonderful resource working with Tim uh, to have so that you can follow up with further learning on Jing Tamak and what all of those different dances means. And uh, so I encourage you to click on that link and it is a web link. So you might want to favorite it in your um, browser bar so that you have it for later. We will be adding to it. And so uh, as we add more information to that resource, it will automatically show up on your end as well. Okay, so turning it over to you, Tim. Now, me question, Jody. Ani kena waya. Na ko gishik dish na kaas, ma ko do dem. Mampi wi was kena ga do nja ba. Chanan dem. Kena mage gibishayin nungo. So um, that language I was just uh, addressing you in is uh, Anishinaabe Moin. And uh, I'm a Anishinaabe. And uh, that's how our language is. That's uh, our prime language. And of course, uh, Jaganash Moin or English is our second language. But a lot of times uh, you don't go to many stores and they'll speak Anishinaabe Moin to you. So you got to use Jaganash Moin quite a bit. I and mean, that's all right. Anyway. Um, what I said to you this morning, I told you my name. Jody uh, mentioned it earlier. She said Nakwagijik. So when I said Nakwagijik Dishnikaz, it meant Dishnikaz means this is who I am. So my name is Nakwagijik uh, Dishnikaz. I said to you, uh, Nakwagijik is my Nishnabe Nuzum. That's our word for name. It's called Nuzum. So Nishnabe Nuzum is uh, Nakwagijik. And in our uh, we we our beliefs, we have a number of wisinyag. Uh, the word that uh, kind of translates to that is is animals, but they're they're more than animals. They're our relatives. We don't think that uh, we're up here and they're down over here. We're over here. They're our relatives to be treated with the same amount of respect. And we actually get a lot of teachings from wisinyag, and uh, we have a number of them with nishnabe that we follow. Mine is makwa or the bear. So a lot of the teachings there, we learn from uh, nature. We learn from makwa when it goes around in different seasons and how it uh, cares for its young, how it protects its young, how it learns, what it uh, learns from uh, the environment and, and things like that. And we incorporate that into our lifestyle. So uh, we are, a lot of us are makwa dodem. Dodem means a uh, uh, clan. So makwa dodem, we have a number of makwa. And uh, I always run into people when I get introduced, and they introduce as Makwa. So I'm always happy to meet a fellow Makwa out there in my travels. And I also told you where I came from. Uh, I said, We gua skiniga dunjaba. The word dunjaba means where I come from. And we gua skiniga, we guas, is a birch tree. So, of course, where I come from, there's many, many birch trees. And that's how we, we used to identify ourselves. Long before we had all the big highways out there, the 400, 401, 410, all those highways, we used to have the waterways. That was our highways. We used the Great Lakes, and before they were called the Great Lakes, they were just gimmick, chigamig, big waters, and also the rivers, the Zibi. That's how we got around. And the uh, landmarks we used to identify where we're going were certain features out there. Uh, some places are called uh, chimney sink, for example, just off the, of a... Uh, Penetang, Midland area. There's a big island in the Georgian Bay. And it's a big island. And it's called Chemnesing. 
and that word translates to big island. Che is big, Nissing is island. So it's a pretty practical way of describing where you are. If you travel further up to Georgian Bay, you'll get to a place called Wasaksing. And Wasa means way off in a distance. Wasa, Wasaksing. So that means when you're traveling, you know whereabouts you are. So if you travel a bit further up there, you go around past Nidominasing, which is Manitoulin Island, the great Manitoulin Island, the island of great spirit. You go around that, you'll come to a place there called Weegwaskiniga. And you can tell if you're coming up by water that there's a lot of birch trees over there. So when you're traveling back in the older days, you would say, ah, oh, Weegwaskiniga over there. That's Weegwaskiniga over there. And But we can get there by highway now. But the, uh, the, how those names came is another story, too. That's a real good teaching to learn all those names. Names are even where you might be from. Mississauga, for example, those has... Uh, words penetanguishin, for example, those those all have names for you that come from Anishinaabe. So uh, our traditions and our cultures are everywhere. They're even the names of your towns and cities carry those names. <clears throat> but what I'm going to be talking about this morning is uh, Jinktamuk. Jinktamuk, celebrating through song and dance. And if you look around where I'm sitting, I'm full of uh, things we might use for Jinktamuk. You know, this is my lifestyle. I've been doing it for, oh, I'm not going to tell you how long. I've been a long, 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 long time. I have uh, my own my own kids who are adults, kids, they're, they're dancers also too. I have grandkids and I have uh, great-grandchildren. So that'll give you an idea how long I've been dancing. And uh, I dance because it, um, it uh, keeps me young, keeps me fit. And uh, it's, uh, we say to ourselves that uh, all dancing is uh, prayer. Prayer is uh, healing. And that's every time we need to get some, you know, get in touch with uh, creation again, we go and do some dancing. That's why it's so important to us. So I'm going to be talking this morning. I'm going to talk to you about uh, the origins and history of uh, Jinktamak. Jinktamak, or some people know it as Pawas, Pawas, but our word for that is Jinktamak. And Jinktamak basically means, uh, well, I'll tell you that in a minute. I'll tell you what Jinktamak means. But also, I'm also going to talk about um, Daywagen, Odaywagen, what that means and what Odaywagen means, or the big drum that has a, a very, very, very important part of Jinktamak. We wouldn't have, have too much Jinktamak without Odaywagen. And then uh, regalia, <clears throat> there's uh, various styles of dance for men and boys there's styles for uh women and, and young girls and all, what they wear for those dance styles is cause regalia so i'm going to speak a little bit about that and then also i'm going to go into uh, um uh the jinktamuk is not a real structure formal way of doing things but it does have a lot of structure it does have a way of doing it so i'm going to be talking about uh, some of the people you might see at Jinktamak, who what they what they do there, how the dance styles come in, and uh, and and kind of things like that that go along with that uh, process of protocols of uh, Jinktamak. So that's just uh, telling you who I am and what we're going to do this morning. So let's get right into it. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, <clears throat> Jinktamak. And as I mentioned earlier, it's it's a it's a celebration. It's a celebration of song. It's a celebration of dance. It's not a ceremony. It's not a ceremony by itself. Some parts of it in there, if they're doing honoring songs or, for example, or something like that, then it becomes ceremony. But by and large, by itself, it's get together of uh, people. We get together. We sing. We dance. We do a lot of eating. We do a lot of visiting. That's what Jinktamak is all about. And uh, where Jinktamak came from was uh, always been with our people, always been with Nishnabic people. It's always been with all the nations across uh, Turtle Island. That's the name we call for um, uh, North America. It's called Turtle Island. And if you want to know why, there's a creation story based on the turtle. But even if you go beyond that, take a look at the outline of United States and uh, Canada and uh, Southern uh, South America, and you'll see it. It looks like the shape of a turtle. So, you know, that the creation story and also the shape of a turtle so it lends kind of it pretty uh, famously to calling it uh, Turtle Island. 
So we've always had celebrations. <clears throat> Today's powers, you know, what the way we carry on, the jinktamuk that we carry on, there were there are tribal celebrations. Tribal nations celebrate, whether it's Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, uh, Mashkaigawa, uh, Blackfoot, you know, Hidakta, Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, all nations will have a celebration. And a lot of times these celebrations are have a long history. Uh, many, many times that uh, our uh, nations were involved with uh, with battles and skirmishes for territory and, and, and hunting rights and stuff like that. And, you know, it wasn't so much that there was an ownership, but there was a respect that everybody had for their, their territory that they lived in. And sometimes when there's infringements on that, there's uh, led to a little bit of battles and stuff. So, and when battles were finished, a lot of times people suffered a lot of loss, a lot of casualty. Um, but sometimes they, they also accomplished a lot and they wanted to honor the, that and they would have, um, they had celebrations, you know, they celebrate, uh, you know, uh, celebrating somebody who's, who's gone on, for example, is a, a custom with a lot of uh, uh, nations of the world. You know, you have to go to um, funerals and wakes and stuff like that. And they call that a celebration of life. So it's the same with us. When we get uh, celebrating, we, we go over and we think about those those uh, battles they might have been in or, or things like that. So we, we celebrate that. And Celebration had uh, its uh, song, it had its dances, and it had its uh, day wagon for all the celebrations. We also celebrate uh, things like uh, community events, you know, harvesting. A lot of times uh, before, uh, before the advent of the stingy box, we had to uh, harvest food and it was shared for the reason that if you shared it, a lot of times it would it would go bad. There was ways of preserving it, of course, but a, a lot of it was meant to share with uh, your relatives, share with your family, share with your neighbors. So a lot of that was uh, time for also for harvesting, for uh, celebrating too. Uh, seasonal changes, we celebrated that. And when they celebrated that, that's when the Jinktamuk happened. That's when the celebrations happened with song and dance. Also, um, Things like the coming of age for, for young people, you know, when they're first uh, touching their feet to the ground and then starting walking like that. Those are celebrations that we had in our communities. And we had uh, always uh, in those uh, celebrations with a lot of uh, uh, relatives coming, a lot of people coming, a lot of family coming, a lot of people coming over. And then we uh, have uh, those celebrations, those jinktabucks. So they, were, they weren't as formal instructors today, but they were always there. They're always always had song and dance within our communities. So uh, back in the early, early days of the history, and we're talking about uh, Chimokamon Akin. That's uh, Chimokamon. Chimokamon means big knife. And uh, Aki is uh, land. So Chimokamon Aki is the, what we described as uh, the United States below us. Yeah, there was battles, big battles with um, the long knives, the soldiers, horse soldiers, and um, uh, towards the latter part of the 1800s, most of those battles were were settled. And um, there was a, an entrepreneur, I guess that's what you want to call him. His name was uh, Buffalo Bill Cody, otherwise known as uh, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill. He, uh, he de designed this uh, Great Wild West Show, he called, Great Wild West Show. And uh, he traveled across to the Eastern United States, most places where people weren't in the West. In the West, they were um, already knowing about the, 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 the indigenous tribes out there. They knew about the battles. They knew about the wagon train. They knew about the stagecoach. They knew about the horses. So he wanted to bring that to the audiences in the mostly the eastern seaboard of the United, United States, Jamokumani King, Buffalo, uh, New York City, Chicago, Boston, all those places like that. So he brought this Wild West show and he uh, wanted to captivate the audience. Well, well, he wanted to captivate the audience, but he wanted to captivate their wallet. That's what his, his intent was. So he, he brought a lot of um, horses, he brought a lot of wagons, stage coaches. He uh, had uh, chase scenes where they chased the wagons. You can see in the background there were the stage coaches shooting at the indigenous people out there. And he also brought uh, indigenous people.
from the Western tribes in the United States. And he brought them on the train. They went over to uh, well, those venues they went to, whether it was in Chicago, New York, and they got painted up and they wanted to make it a grand spectacle. So he he he, he got a lot of feathers, uh, lots of feathers. And uh, this was a one warrior there, I think that sitting bull, he had uh, a large, large feather headdress and also an eagle staff with eagle, a lot of eagle feathers on it. So he wanted to capture the audience's attention. So he did it in a grand way. That's why he called it the Great Wild West Show. And when they came in, they came in in a in a in line. He had them. He had them in lines. And he being kind of a chauvinist back in the early days. That was the the way we did things way back in the day. Still, almost to this day, it happens that way. There's a there's a dominance of uh, there's a way of coming into the his uh, Wild West show. He called it a grand entry, and he had people coming in. They brought the horses in. They brought the wagons in. They brought the indigenous people in. And he brought them in from uh, male down to the female, youngest to oldest. So reason I bring that up is that we're going to keep that in mind when we talk about today's Jinktamuk. Because a lot of uh, the aspects of, uh, first off, the celebration of uh, Indigenous people. For all those celebrations I told you about, the battles, the community events, the harvesting, the change of season, the things that happen in the family. That was kind of blended with some aspects of... Uh, Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. Today we still have grand entries. So some of those grand entries has its origins in the Wild Bill's uh, Wild West show. So, you know, he's got a, a lot of influence, a lot of things that are today are, I guess, are a blend of all those kind of uh, different things that make uh, Jinktamuk. But here's the thing to consider that once Jinktamuk, that's been adapted by, um, say, the Anishinaabek or Haudenosaunee, that belongs to us. That's our that's our way of doing things. Manda Gizitchigewin, that's what we say, the way we do it. So we've taken all that and we've uh, we bring that in. And today when you go to Jinktamuk, you'll see that. But that's where it came from. That's what the origins of it was. It came from all of our celebrations from many, many generations ago. And it also came from uh, oh, uh you know Buffalo Bills Wild West show. You know, our uh, Jinktamuk, most likely it wouldn't happen without an Ode Wagon. We have Ode Wagon, that's what it's called. Or in Jaganashi Moan, big drum, big drum. And if you look, you will get that, you'll see that it is a big drum. It is a big drum. And it's seated, seated right in the, the midst, in the middle of a number of uh, Edway Gijig, Edway Gijig singers that sing on the Oday Wagon. There's that right in the middle with the, it, uh, it usually a, a moose hide or a buffalo hide that covering on that Oday Wagon makes a sound. Right. And it's sit it, sit it. Mm. See that guy in the bottom picture there with his hand up by his ear? I know that guy. He knows lots of stuff. He tells me stuff all the time about stuff. He's he's probably speaking to all that. If you click on those those links one time, you'll probably hear him speak that. I think he sounds like me sometimes. That's what people say. He sounds like me. Anyway, anyway, that's what we had. The Ode Wagon. Ode, the word Ode means heart. Ode. Ode. Right now, that's growing outside a lot, those big red berries that look like this. Those are called Ode Min. Ode Min. The heart berries. Strawberries. That's what we call strawberries. So Ode Wagon is the sound of our heart. That's what it says. That's what the translation for Ode Wagon is, the sound of our heart. And that's what we call that. We call that uh, the heartbeat of a... Uh, Shkikamekwe. Shkikamekwe is Anishinaabe uh, Nuzum for uh, Mother Earth. Shkikamekwe. That would give us all of our medicines. Shkike is medicine. So Shkikekwe. Shkikekwe is that who gives us, provides all our medicines for everything we need. So that sound that comes from it is called the heartbeat of our nation. So when you go to Jinktamuk, 
that's a very <clears throat> vital piece of jing tamuk is to have your old day way gun. And that big drum was uh, a gift, was a gift given to our people to uh, stop or give us something to do besides warring. So it, it probably to think there's a story about old day way gun too. Well, another time we'll have to sit down and talk about old day way gun. It's a story in itself. And but uh, things to consider there, if you look around, those are nini, Anishinaabe nini, or nini means men. And they sit around that old day wagon and they use old day way ganatik, old day way ganatik, or drumsticks. That's what they use to. Some people say they beat that drum, and, and that's an improper way of saying it. No, they. They, they strike it for sound. It's not it's not a beat. So the terminology sometimes mean a lot. You know, you beat something, it's like you're you're not happy with it and you you want to teach it a lesson or something. Well, this is not the case here. They're doing it out of love. They're doing it out to create that sound that comes from Ode Win. So used Ode Way Gana Tig to to uh, sound Ode Way Gun. So those men that sit around that old day wagon, they carry their songs. They learn hundreds of songs over the course of their careers that they sit around old day wagon. And uh, they carry that in their memory. They, they don't have uh, song books. They don't have a playlist beside them. That playlist is uh, right here. From all that they learned from the time they were small to the time they got to, to carry out the songs in a big room. And uh, a lot of times if you go to... Uh, Jintamuk or Pawas, you'll see that uh, the men are sitting around the drum and they're they're singing the songs. And uh, they're, will our women will form a protective circle around the men, sometimes a lot of them, sometimes maybe one or two, but they, they stand around them. And there's protocols that go with that drum that the men have to carry in a good way. So the women are there to make sure that the, they watch that to make sure it's done in a good way. And also that they, uh, they also sing too, the Kweok. Kweok, it means women, the Kweok, they sing, or the girls, uh, they sing there, and they provide backup for the men when they sing their songs. So from the Ode Wagon, there's a number of songs. There's uh, for every style of dance, for every category of dance, they have songs. They have, uh, you know, there's, uh, could be six to eight, not, I'm going to talk about uh, eight styles of dance today. There's eight styles of dance, and they have to know those songs. There's uh, songs that they call straight songs. Uh, they have second songs. Sometimes those second songs are specific to their, to their style of dance. They could be, uh, you know, a sidestep. They could be a crow hop, uh, you know, jingle dress song. Those are healing songs, and at times ceremonial songs. These, the way you get, need to know the songs. And they're a very, very important part of uh, Jingtimuk. Now, sometimes they also sing a lot of intertribal songs. And uh, as uh, someone who goes to a powwow, you, you listen sometimes. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in uh, people that are involved with uh, Jingtimuk and uh, the people there. Sometimes you'll hear, I'll talk about the role of a MC later. You might hear the MC or master of ceremonies, you'll say, Okay, we're going to have an intertribal. We're going to have an intertribal. That means everybody can dance. Everybody. You don't have to be in regalia. So that means if you hear them calling for an intertribal song, come on up and join us and come on up and dance because that's that's your invitation to come on out there. So that's Ode Wagon, very important part of Jing So we're going to go on a little bit now. I'm going to talk about uh, our dance styles. You might have noticed a lot of regalia behind me. Regalia. I have some here. Here. On the wall behind me. This is, uh, this, is, uh, this, is my, this is my place. This is my happy place. I'm sitting here in regalia all the time. I'm sitting here. Some of it's uh, my grandson's. Some of it's mine. What I want to talk about is regalia itself. Sometimes I hear it called costumes in my hair. I get the hair on my neck gets really standing up. I get all like this because it's not a costume. 
It's not a costume. Don't don't ever mistake that and call the regalia for dancers costumes. And the reason I'm going to not to call I'm going to tell you the difference. Costumes uh, once a year. Sometimes you have uh, Halloween, for example. There's a time you go to a store. They have a Halloween store, and it sells lots and lots and lots of costumes in there. Because when you go in there, what you want to do, uh, you want to put something on. You want to dress up in a certain way. Uh, you want to pretend to be somebody that what well, that evening, that Halloween. You want to go around from uh, wherever you're going to go and start to get some treats, you know, get some candies, whatever. So you you put on a different kind of an outfit. That's uh, a lot, there's a history about Halloween too. We don't have time to talk about the history of Halloween, but what what it does is it, it makes up for a lot of costumes. So uh, sometimes people mistake that and then call the you know uh, in uh, Anishinaabe outfits. We we'll call it outfit too. But the better word for it is regalia, and they might call that a costume. So don't mistake that for a costume, because whether I put my, uh, you know, my T-shirt on, or whether I have my uh, my teaching shirt, or whether I have my regalia on, I'm still who I am after I take it off. So when you take a costume off, you're back to being somebody else. After you're back into your original your original self, you're not pretending to be anybody anymore. So I'm not pretending. I am me. And all this with different forms. All these dancers are who they are after they take their regalia off. They're still who they are. So don't mistake it. Call it uh, costumes. So anyway, they have regalia and dance styles are separated. Not really separated, but I'm going to do that. They're going to be called uh, men's and boys and uh, women's and girls. So there's. I'm going to talk about three styles today. There's a traditional style. There's a grass style, and there's a fancy dance style. So the traditional style of dance, that's the style I dance. I dance traditional dance. Northern traditional is called. There's Southern traditional, and there's there's even gets more split into different areas too, but mine is traditional. It's the oldest style of dance, and it uh, the dance styles uh, represent um, warriors and hunters. This is a all of the ones over there, you can see that uh, pictures of uh, uh, our traditional dancers. Uh, the, we'll go uh, to the Quayuk first. On the far right side of the screen, there, that's that's my that's my Namigashi, uh, my mom. She's uh, gone on to uh, the spirit world for some time now, but she's been a very big influence on uh, me being part of Jigtamuk. Uh, and uh, the name we use for uh, traditional dance is Gitche Anishinaabe Zigawin. Zigawin. Gitche Anishinaabe Zigawin. Anishinaabe, like I started telling you, that's who I am, Anishinaabe. And the old style, Gitche, means older style of Anishinaabe Zigawin. Older style of dance or traditional dance. So that's a woman's traditional on the far, it would be on my left. I'm sure if you're looking the same, it would be there. And then there's a different style of women's on the other side, opposite. That's my donis. Donis uh, means daughter in Nishnabe and Wind. This is my donis. She dances a Bodawatomi scrub style, or Potawatomi is the Anglicized word for Boda. Bodawe means to make a fire. Bodawatomi are the people that, of the fire. So they, she carries on a different style there called a scrub style. In the middle, you might know, you might recognize uh, that one uh, there, he's getting it ready for some dancing. He's, there's a there's a link there to some dancing. He does a little bit of a style of dance. And then, yeah, let's have a, a, a quick second of looking at the dance. <laughs> Look at on the back, that's called a bustle. I wear a bustle, a bustle made of eagle feathers. And uh, on my head right here, that's called a, that's called a roach, or Mishwanjiga in our language is called a roach. And uh, I just happened to have a, a bit of that right with me this morning with that traditional. This has uh, been right here. This is what I was wearing in that, that little bit of a video. It's called a, a Mishwanjiga. And it's a roach, and it it sits uh, as you can see in the video. It sits on top here. I was getting ready because I'm going to Jinktamuk after I'm finished today. So I was 
getting my my gear ready to go, my my outfit, my regalia ready to go. So this is uh, what it is. These on top are two eagle feathers. Uh, eagle feathers are um, very important to Anishinaabeg people. A lot to uh, a lot of indigenous nations. It uh, rec recommends recognizes that you've done something very important, very something noteworthy, and that's how they honor you. They honor you with giving eagle feathers. So I've received those a number of years ago. I've done a lot of uh, teachings in different places, so I uh, carried out with, uh, with the honor that was given. And I, when you have regalia and where it comes from, there's a story. There's uh, you have to remember where it came from, who gave it to you, and why, because that's how we pass on our teachings. Everything has stories to it. They need to remember the stories. It's uh, one of those things that we uh, we hold dearly. So that's traditional dance. There's also a grass dance. There's a style of grass. There's no bustle. There's no feathers on the back. There's a straight grass dance style. And it uh, comes from a plains area. It's called the Grass Dance Society. And it talks about, uh, you know, uh, the, back in the day, they had uh, uh, the movement of the grass, the long, long grass before they had lawnmowers and stuff like that. You know, they would go out there. They would be responsible for getting the grounds ready. So the style of dance kind of mimics that style of that. It's, there's more to it, but that's that's one ask. One the you know, teaching is given with the grass dance. So the one on the far right, that's that's my uh, my nephew, my nephew uh, Miles, very accomplished grass dancer. So that's that style there. And there's also a, a bit a video on that also. It's com included also. Now we're going to move on to uh, fancy dance. We're going to go to men's and men's and boys styles. Is also a fancy dance. This is a. Uh, uh, it's got two bustles. If you look behind me on the far wall here, this side here behind me, that's that's those are bustles. Those are my grandson's bustles, and uh, you know he. I was uh, doing some cleaning on them, so it just, just happened just happened to be here this morning for you to look at those those bustles very closely. But that's the difference between a traditional dancer and a, and a, a fancy dancer. The fancy has two bustles, and of course, they want to look fancy. So that's a style like that. So there, they came from um, a war dance. They call that, it originated in Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma. And they were calling it the Oklahoma War Dance. So the styles of our dances, they're adaptable from one uh, nation to another. That's what we do. We take these on. You can see that there, we have two uh, young relatives there on the right-hand side. There's the bustles I've just shown you. And uh, they're they're getting ready to dance. That's uh, that's uh, my nephew and also his uh, his his uh, his son. They're, that's how we learn. We learn from each other. And usually it's going from uh, families. That's how dances are, are learned. You know, they learn from a very young age. You learn by being there. So it's called Benashi. Benashi is like a, a bird and it's got a lot of a fancier look to it. Zigoan, Zigoan, that's the name of that. So that's those are men's styles. We're going to move on to the women's and girls. Again, the women have a traditional style. There's a little bit of a clip there we'll, we'll put for in there also. This is the fancy dance style. And uh, Maybe we'll run that a, a bit. I'll show you a little bit as I, I talk about the fancy dance style. So it's a very athletic. Uh, it's called Memeguanig Ejigod. Memeguanig. Memeguan means to be a buffalo, or not buffalo. Uh, it's a butterfly. So that's what they're doing. They're floating across the ground and moving like that. And uh, women's style came in about the 1950s. They were not as fancy as that. But in 1951, uh, one young lady decided she wanted to dance uh, fancy like the men. So she did, disguised herself as a man and got painted and went out there and danced like that. But then the elders got found out and they, they, instead of getting really upset with her, she, they said to her, why don't you design your own style, get your own outfit and go out there? So ever since then, they've had a women's uh, fancy dance style. So this is what it is. You can see that the fancy dancers have to be more athletic than the uh, you know, in shape all the time. Sometimes they have iron man and women contests where you can dance up to 50 songs. And 50 songs is about three minutes a song, so you can tell how long those songs would be. For those of you in math, figure that out. 50 times three. Meme Guan Egg. 
as you got women's fancy dance fancy shawl fancy shawl all right we'll move on to the next style for women and girls it's called a, a jingle dress Genoa ojigan jigoan in our language means jingle dress and it's a healing dress it came about from uh, a, a, um, a grandfather whose daughter granddaughter was very sick and he had a vision a dream to make a dress that looked like this and to uh, put it on his granddaughter and take her out. At first, when he went around, he could just carry her on the, the dance arbor. And then later on, he was able to uh, uh, walk with her and then she danced on her own. And then later on, this is a long story, she was able to dance uh, on her own steam under a lot of uh, things. So there was a lot of uh, the healing that went on with it. So we used this a lot into our Jintamuk. And many times you're asked upon uh, to come with this healing dress to, you know, a lot of times you'll give sema or tobacco to these dancers and ask for something that you might need for yourself or your family or somebody that might be in need. So you you use that a lot. Um, they're very, very respected, these dancers. There's a lot of uh, uh, different teachings that go along with this uh, jingle dress. And uh, there's some of the movements they have with the jingle dress. They're uh, carrying all those jingles or metal cones. They're metal cones that are rolled up. Years ago, they used to have traders come around and they'd, they chewed a lot of snuff and had metal cones on their lids. So we rolled those cones up and then they made the, the jingle dress from those cones. Must have been a lot of snuff chewers back in the day with the fur traders because they had a lot of those jingle cones to make the, make the dress. Yeah, so we're going to go to... Uh, Traditional, women's traditional, that's what we're going to go into next. We started there. This is grass dance again. And, uh, oh, here's something that, uh, you know, we're looking at here is that uh, eagle staff is part of uh, coming in. Anyway, we're going to, we're getting the, the full tour here. I think we'll go back to the, both the men and women. That's where the, the traditional women were, were also there. They They're tucked away right there. There we go. We had traditional men and women tucked in. And you see the style with uh, the women and girls uh, traditional dance. They're, uh, it's the oldest style. Traditional dance is the oldest style. That's why it's get you in Ishnab as you go, as you go in. There's always one foot in contact with mother earth you'll never see a, a, fancy, a traditional dancer with their feet both of them on the air there's always one in contact because that's the style of our dance so you know it's a very old style uh, i've uh, danced many many years and from some of the, the photos you see there there are different powers i've been to different jinktamuks and i was uh, a great honor to dance at a jinktamuk and dance for for some of our people so we also have woodland styles men and women, and also chicken dance style. But uh, those are some of the styles we have. So each style has a song. It has a straight song, and it has a special, they call them specialty songs. They're sometimes they're uh, like a double beat, uh, a sneak up, a crow hop, duck and dive. They're, they're healing. There are a lot of different songs that we have. So those are a lot of that goes with the dance styles and regalia the dance style and regalia you could talk an hour or more just on one style and because every piece that we're wearing has an origin has a story has a reason for being there so you're getting the you're getting an introductory uh, one this the day we'll come back if you need one day we'll come back and talk about each individual stuff but i want to get into uh, talking about uh jake the muck itself you know uh there's not a um, a formal structure. You, you don't have a booklet that says, here's how we're going to do our jinktamuk. Every jinktamuk is going to be run this way. That doesn't exist. But there are uh, ways of doing things. Manda Gizichigewen, as I said earlier, the ways of doing things. And, uh, how you know, there's a, it's been evolving. You know, Anishinaabek people evolve. We evolve and adapt. And a lot of this is adapting to different things. A couple of years ago, we had COVID and we had to adapt to that and evolve. Nowadays, I just noticed um, uh, yesterday, we had one of our Jinktamuks canceled because of the forest fires up there. 
too much smoke. We can't uh, go dance in that area too. So those are adaptations of stuff that you have to adapt to. So they're not saying, okay, we're going to go ahead and dance and ho hopefully everybody makes it out and doesn't get sick. We don't do that. We respect the people's health and we say, okay, not this year. We'll come back another time. So those are, I mean, about uh, um, evolving and adapting. So each style, every there's two types of powers, Jinktamuk. There's a traditional style and there's a contest power. Now they're very different, they, but they follow the same structure, but they're very different. Like uh, for example, a contest power has individual contests for each age group and style, and as well as a drum contest, there's contests for the drums. They use other staff such as uh, dance judges, uh, drum judges, they have tabulators, people who keep the points. And then uh, on the last day, usually Sunday, they have a prize structure and the prize are given out to the dancers. And now you don't say that you're the best dancer or you beat somebody out there on the dance floor. Here's what it is. It is your interpretation of that song that came from Day Wagon, how you performed your dance to that song. Sometimes you're right on. Other days you didn't have enough coffee. You don't you don't have that you don't have that connection there. So some dancers just are so connected you can see it right away. That's what the judges see. So it's not a it's not a, a contest of other dancers, a contest between you and the drum to put the best interpretation of that song as you hear. So the power or Jinktumak has staff. They have a they have a master of ceremonies. He's the one that directs everything out there. He's on the one on microphone. He says, hello, come on in, folks. We're going to do, we're going to have a grand entry shortly. And after a while, he said, okay, we're going to have this dance. We're going to have this dance. We're going to have the tiny tots come out. We're going to have the young people come out. So he's kind of the one that gives uh, the direction out there. The one that really directs out there is called the arena director. He makes sure that the arena, when dance styles are out there are clear, he lines up people for grand entries. So his job is very important between the, Master of Ceremonies and Arena Director, those are the ones that are most, most important out there. They're all important, but they have a, a specific function to keep it on going. Uh, at times there's head veteran. He's responsible for all the eagle feathers out there to make sure that they're, you know, that they don't fall or if they do fall, that they're taken care of in a good way. There's again a story about what happens if an eagle feather falls. Every power needs head dancers. That means the people that are charged with the responsibility to lead out every dance, every dance that goes out there from uh, Saturday morning till Sunday afternoon. There's a, there's a song coming out and I need somebody to come out there to lead the dancers out. So that's the responsibility of the head dancers. So grand entry, they have a grand entry, as I told you, from uh, the Wild West show from our celebrations years ago. We adapted that. So we have a, a function, a way of coming in. They bring in Eagle staffs, for example. They bring in uh, uh, flags from each community that come in to visit. So th those are coming in. Those are lined up by the arena director. And then all the regalia and all the dance styles come in after from oldest to youngest, male to female. That's the responsibility of the arena director to bring them in. So under where we dance around, it's called a dance arbor. And it's very important because the Eagle staffs Megasi, Mitigawak, they're, once they're brought in, they're placed around that arbor. Also, the flags are placed around there. You can see here, there have Gitche, Gitche Twa Ab Winnegan. Gitche Twa Ab Winnegan. It's called the arbor. That's the place where uh, a lot of the old day wagon are set up there. The drums are set up in there. And uh, on the far left over there, uh, a lot of times, all of our megasi, miguanatic, miguan is a feather, miguanatic eagle staffs. All those eagle staffs are placed there. They're brought in in a special in the grand entry. It means we're bringing in the spirit of Jigtamuk. Those are you know brought in by all the eagle staffs that are visiting. And here we are, megasi, miguanatic. There's a, a couple ones that, were visiting with me one day. We we're coming in for a tune-up, so I, I work with feathers a lot, and you know I come in, I'd be asked to come in and clean, you know, help them uh, spruce them up again, get ready for the next power. So I was very honored to do that also too. 
So these are Mikasi, Miguan, Nitik, Eagle Staffs. They're very important. They're, they bring everybody in. And then we also carry flags. Or ake, Akewe, Win. Akewe, Win. It describes Ake is a land. It describes where they come from. Akewe, Win. There's Nabe one in the bottom right hand corner. And they're placed also around Gichetua of Winnegan. So this is where they go. So that they, they come in first and they stay there till the power is over. Mostly the power is on Saturday and Sunday. They have uh, two sessions on Saturday. They have a Saturday afternoon and a Saturday, they have a supper break and then they have a, a Saturday evening before it gets dark. Sometimes a lot of lights in there. They got it all lit up nowadays so you can dance a little longer. And then Sunday afternoon and Sunday afternoon, when all the dancing is done, they have a giveaway. That's our way of doing things. Uh, Anishinaabeg people like to honor people who come to visit their, their Jinktamuk. So they have this big giveaway. And everybody gets something for being there. You go up, they call you up, come on up and get a, come on up and get a gift. And it's, a, it's a, probably an insult to the community if you don't, because then you don't, you don't respect uh, who they are. They're honoring you. And when they honor you, it's not, oh, no, no, I don't want that. Go and get something. You bit small, go and get something. And then they retire the Eagle staffs and the flags. And then that's it for another year. And then in contest powers, there's a, they award the prizes after the last session, after Eagle staffs are gone out. So there's different ways and different powers. Um, I did a lot of talking there. I'm going to tell you a couple more, more things there to consider. Really, really consider is don't do this. Uh, regalia, <clears throat> including feathers, are often left where the dancer sits. Sometimes they go up to go get a drink. Sometimes they go get something to eat and they leave them there. And they're not abandoned. They are left there in the care of the people that are there. So do not, and I, I emphasize this, do not ever touch that without asking permission of the, of the person that wears that regalia. Don't ever do that. That's just bad form. Another thing is, uh, People come with a lot of cameras and they, they, they click away and it's uh, proper to ask that person's permission first, just out of respect to them, that offer. And a lot of times I know when I'm getting ready, I'm getting my hair done and people want to take a, a picture of me getting my hair done. I said, hold it, hold it. Nobody goes to your home when you're in the, in the washroom in the morning, brushing your teeth, getting ready to go. Nobody takes your picture there. Would you let them do that? No. Well, I'm not ready. You can take my picture after when I'm ready, but not now. So those are kind of things like that. Another thing is when you go to some powers and they're they're not in the wooded areas and stuff like that, they put up canopies. Those canopies up there, and they have chairs around them. Uh, consider this: those are the the property of the, the of the dancers and the singers. They put them there to keep themselves out of the hot sun and stuff like that. So don't occupy that. Sometimes I've gone out there, I've gone on a dance arena, dance out there and come back and I've seen a whole family in my canopy sitting on my chairs. And then I have to politely tell them to move because it's very hot out there and if you wear a lot of gear, it, it, you need to put a cool place to sit. So there's a couple of things to consider. I'm going to leave it there. That's a lot to take in for in a, in a in the morning, you know. Chimigwech. Uh, for listening to me. And uh, if there's questions, I'll, I'll have time for questions. Kim, there are so many questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I apologize that we will, we will most likely not be able to get through everybody's question. Um, but thank you so much for, you know, Clearly, there's a lot of active listening going on, and there's a lot of questions around what's what's in what's behind you, which I know that you did touch on. We could do a whole session on just maybe we call it what's in Tim's room. Um, <laughs> but um, anyway, we'll we'll start with some. Uh, this question here comes from a grade three, four class in the Wellington Catholic District School Board. And their question is, are the dances easy to learn? Yeah, they are. They are. Here's here's how it all starts. Every dancer out there has this beat. Listen. You move that beat down to your feet. You go one, 
two, one, two, one, two. That's your basic step. That's as easy as it gets. And as the drum beats up, you listen to Do O'Day Wagon, the beat of the drum will go like this, about this speed. So you move your feet like that. Once you get the one, two down and you start dancing, you can, you've got that made. Come on out to an inner tribal and try that. One, two, just remember that one, two, put your foot down again, move your next foot forward, down again, move it like that. Then you start moving your body. Remember that you have, you have elbows, you have uh, shoulders, you have hips, move them along to the dance too. Then it becomes very, very easy. Practice, just needs practice. Now, there was a question actually that came in um, and I I have, would have to scroll through the questions to find it, but it was in regards to, well, somebody had asked about when are we going to get to dance? And unfortunately today was just information, but I think that's a good piece around the protocols is um, maybe you want to speak to this a little bit, but it's really important that when you, when you're going to do that aspect that you bring somebody in to your classroom, such as Tim, if you can. Um, somebody from the community to actually guide and, and teach you how to do that. Am I correct on that, Tim? Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah means yes. Yeah, so you hear me say yeah a lot. That means yes, I agree. You know that uh, a lot of our uh, our dances are are learned from from people, even younger people. They've learned that. They've learned the, the ways to do it. There's things that, for example, you shouldn't do. I mean, a lot of times I think that... Uh, I get offended sometimes if people start to go out dancing and they want to hop around, jump around, because, you know, that's not the way. Even though you have that the freedom to creativity, there's a basic step that goes respect. I always have that respect. You know, a lot of that respect is learned. And, you know, if, uh, you know, you, you don't have uh, someone that's uh, from an indigenous community, for example, there's a lot of different things that they, they you know, a, a person other than that might not know and, and would be teaching and not in a good way, not in a good way. And sometimes that's one of those kind of those um, a different uh, way of doing things. It's not quite right, you know, that uh, kind of sometimes even offensive to if you go someplace and you, and you, you know, if you learned it not the right way, the right teachings that go along with it, it doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. Now, you could, however, go to a powwow, a jinktamuk, and as you mentioned, there's something called intertribal, and that's where everyone is invited to share in the dance space. And so we really would encourage you actually to go and experience a powwow. Mm -hmm. The master ceremonies, yeah, that's what he'll say. He'll say, okay, up, you know, and you listen because you always know it's going to come next because the master ceremony tells you what the next song coming is. All right, our next song is going to be intertribal. What that means, intertribal means every uh nation of the world whatever part of the world come from you're a nation so when they say intertribal it means internation you come on out there you don't have to be in regalia they'll say that many times you do not have to be in regalia come out and dance but be respectful mm -hmm. the next question is from an elementary virtual school in york region district school board it's a grade four or five class and they would like to know, can you talk a little bit about the significance of hair? Um, and I think you probably already, maybe you already answered the second question, which is what is your favorite dance and why? Mm -hmm. so the first one is about the significance of hair. Hair is a, a very significant, uh, a lot of uh, what we have, for example, this here is a, a braid of sweet grass. And we talked about that a little earlier about the grass dancers and this, Grass, that is uh, one of our, our medicines we use, sweet grass, and it's braided. And a lot of times when we're dancing, we braid that. The strength of our, of our nation is in our hair, we say. That uh, the strength, you put three parts of that together. You put uh, your body, your mind, and your spirit, and you braid that together when you're getting ready to go to Jinktamuk because it, you want to be focused on what you're doing. So uh, even the, you know, the short, a lot of my nephews have short, short hair. But they understand that the, the reason that the, the hair is there, you know, uh, uh, many times, uh, uh, you know, younger ones, they, they go to different areas, you know, not in the First Nation community, and they get ridiculed because of their long hair. You know, they're who you think you are, a girl. That Those are those are stere old, old, old stereotypes without any knowledge about who we are. So, uh, you know, 
uh, I say, learn a little bit more about what hair means. I know that a lot of nations wear hair and, and they wrap it in different ways around their head because that hair has different meaning. Hair means exactly that to us, that it uh, reminds us that when we have our, our uh, you know, body, mind, and spirit all as one, it, it, it keeps it in touch with uh, who we are as Nishnabic people. And you don't necessarily have to have, everybody has to have hair. But uh, it's there, and when you have it, look after it, look in a good way. And my favorite dance, of course, is traditional dance. That's my favorite style. That, that was a no-brainer question right there. That's my favorite style of dance because I've been doing it uh, most of my life. I, I like the teachings I, I received from that for many years. I've, I've received many, many teachings from a lot of uh, elders and uh, mentors and uh, that told me, uh, things about eagle feathers, what what eagle feathers are meaning, how to care for them. Uh, you know, there's a lot of teachings. There's a regalia that goes with a traditional dancer. We could talk for uh, three hours here. We're not even get finished with it because each piece has a significance and a history. It goes back to uh, even before Wild Bill, Buffalo Bill's uh, Wild West show and uh, the wars with the, with the, Chimokwans and long knives and stuff. So there's a, a, the styles of dance and also that there. I find it, uh, you know, every day, every day I go out and, and dance and it uh, it gives me that uh, that good feeling. And I know every other dancer does too. I'm not saying this is better. It's just the one I like. Hey, so here's another question from... Um... Plowman's Park Public School from the Peel District School Board, that's a grade three, four class. And their question is, is there a reason that powwows are usually held in the summer? Oh, yes, definitely. The, it's uh, a lot of times they were celebrations that we talked about, celebrations about uh, the seasons and, and things like that. So historically, they were always done in times of harvest and when times are good, sometimes in the winter, um, you know, life is tough back before uh, we had uh, grocery stores and close by and we could get them and stuff. So lives were tougher. And not only that, the, the function, the, you know, the, the places to dance, uh, you know, it's hard to dance in the snow. Matter of fact, it's too cold. You, you don't want to do that. So practical reasons like seasonal changes and that are why most of it's done in the summer and, and ability to travel. There's a lot of factors that go into it. So yeah, it's a good question, but uh, summer is uh, summer is the season. Uh, we have indoor powers, but they're they're not the same as touching uh, your feet to Chicago uh, McQuay Mother Earth. That's when that's when you have that connection. It's hard to go through all that concrete and uh, and floorboards to get into to have that touch. So it feels better out in uh, out in the sun, out in the out in the grass. Uh, so this next question is from Saint Marguerite Bourgeois. Um, grade three, four class. This might be a big one, but what materials do you use to make your drums and regalia? I know you, you did mention some of that, but um, this other question, which I thought was a really, that was a great catch when they saw the image was why does one of the singers have his hand near his throat? Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll we'll that, go I'm to that. that. Yeah, I'm going to put the picture back up. So yeah. there's a reference to it. Okay. Yeah, there's uh, the style of dance, uh, singing that we have in this area. It's called Northern singing, Northern style of singing. It's very, very high pitched. The sounds that come out from the drummers, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The higher it is, the, the, the better it sounds. So what he's doing, he's constricting his, uh, his vocal cords to get that high pitch out there. So every song that comes out, it's not just, ah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're actually saying words. You're actually singing a song. If you listen to it, it's just, it's like our songs today on the radio. I was going, you know, that's kind of the same idea there. So he's doing that to get that higher pitch from his voice as he's singing. And he most likely here is the lead singer. So he's the one that initiates the song. And the other ones will will bring up the the chorus, if you want to call it. But they, they all have a purpose there. The lead singer is the one that that brings out that that originally at first that uh, day wagon or day wagon is a uh, moose hide in our areas buffalo hide primarily out, out in western part of uh, county united states it depends 
on the availability of uh, the, the material you use in our area is a lot of moose more than buffalo. So we are coming to the end of our time today and I just wanna put up, um, oh, I can't see them here. I'll have to scroll through it quick. But just in for these final, final words here, Tim, as we uh -huh. kind of close off our session. This is uh, uh, actually the way Manda Gisichigewen again, the way it is, this is how I was taught to uh, carry on my life is that to teach the traditions to the little ones. And it and it doesn't necessarily mean just indigenous little ones. It means to anybody that needs or wants to learn. So we're passing on, this is what I'm doing this morning. I'm exactly doing this. I'm teaching traditions to our little ones, our young ones, the ones that are inquisitive, the ones that, that want to know. So this is how it's done. Our It's called oral tradition. This is how we do it. We tell our stories. We don't forget the teachings that go with it. So it's never too late to, to teach our our little ones. And uh, this is reason why I dance. To us, when we dance, it's to pray. And when we pray, it's to heal. And when we heal, it's to give. And to give is to live. So to live is to dance. This is kind of sums why a lot of dancers dance. So we've come to the end of our time together. Tim, um, you opened up with some um, beautiful words. Do you want to just close our session up? Oh. <laughs> Miigwech, miigwech, and miigwech. So I said, uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you for all for listening. And uh, may our uh, creator, uh, God, look after us on your return to your class. Naho, miigwech. Miigwech, Kinawea. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in uh, this morning. And like I mentioned, that resource is available now. You will notice there'll be some updates coming. We have a few a uh, few more things to add in there, but you do have that live link for you to um, use as a reference uh, moving forward. So thank you again, everyone.